Hi coders, welcome to another episode of my creative coding series where we use HTML, CSS, plain vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas element to create all different kinds of interactive animated effects. Today I will take you step by step through advanced generative art project tutorial and we will learn how to write any text on canvas and turn it into interactive bubbles. This can be easily integrated into any website as a cool header. If you are a complete JavaScript beginner, I have a set of videos specifically aimed to explain basics of canvas animation and particle systems, so maybe you should start with that. Check out my playlist. Each video is a standalone project tutorial where I take you step by step through the code as we write it together. Click the like please if you like my stuff and want me to make more, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when new coding tutorial comes out. Let's start. In this video, I showed you how to create particle text with vanilla JavaScript in three steps. First, we randomly spread particles around canvas and gave them some basic physics, such as friction and acceleration. The second step was to write some text and make particles to organize themselves in shape of those letters. And the third step was connecting individual particles with lines, so-called constellations effect. If you didn't code along with me in the previous video, you can still watch and I will explain how to replace particle shape with bubbles which can be applied to any particle effect we have built in previous tutorials, not just this one. You can also do that tutorial first and come back here if you want. This effect is not for complete beginners, but if you already have some understanding of JavaScript, you can go ahead and code along with me. So here I have final project files from that previous tutorial, index.html, style.css and script.js. We will work only in script.js today. We will adjust this effect a little to make it look like bubbles instead of constellations. So the first thing I need is to make lines wider. This will apply to all lines on canvas, but mainly to strokes, and it will make our bubble outlines thicker. On line 8, I say ctx line width equals the 3. I also want to make the particles slower, so it looks like the bubbles are floating. On line 34, I change this to density to be a random number between 1 and 9, for example. On line 96, we have our custom connect function, which cycles through particles, measures distance between each individual particle, and if they are close enough, it connects them with lines. We don't need this functionality for bubbles effect, so this function is declared on line 96, and I am calling it here on line 91 inside animation loop. To disable this function, all I need to do is comment it out here on line 91. Right, now our particles look like simple white dots. If I want to make any changes to particle appearance, it should be done here inside the draw method on particle class on line 36. What I want to do today is make them look like bubbles that inflate and pop again as mouse moves closer and further away. First I will change fill style from white to RGBA 255 255 255 with 0.8 opacity. This will be for small white reflection patches on each bubble. Stroke style will be light shade of blue. This will be for outlines that highlight edges of each individual bubble. Now as I said I want bubbles to inflate and become bigger when they are close to mouse. And as they slowly drift away from the current mouse position, I want them to return back to the original size. I will separate our drawing code and create three if-else statements inside that will check current distance between bubble and mouse and draw slightly different shape and size depending on that distance. Lines 37, 38 and 39 will stay the same and close path and fill on lines 43 and 44 will also be static. What will change conditionally will be the drawing code between. On line 40 I say if this dot distance, by that I mean distance of this particle and mouse cursor is less than mouse dot radius minus 5. Mouse dot radius is declared on line 14 inside our custom mouse object and it's currently set to 150 pixels. So if the distance between this particle and mouse is less than 150 minus 5, we are going to draw a circle. Else, if this dot distance is less or equal to mouse dot radius, we will run different code. And the third option will be just else. This will run if both the first and the second if statements are false. On line 41, I used this dot distance, but if I look inside particle class constructor between lines 29 and 33, I don't see any distance property. 
We did already calculate the distance between this particle and mouse cursor here on line 55 inside update method. I explained exactly how that works in the previous video. All I need to do now is to save this value on the actual particle object so I can use it inside the draw method. To do that, I can simply say this.distance is equal to distance. And on particle class constructor, I just declare this.distance like this. Now, for every frame of animation, whenever update method runs, this.distance on each particle gets updated with the current distance between this particle and mouse. Now, the if statement on line 42 will work. I can go to line 42 and if the distance is less than mouse.radius minus 5, I set particle size to 10. In the other if statement, I say this.size is 15. Else, this.size is 20. The result will look like this because we are only drawing a circle on line 44 when the first condition is met. Let's copy this and make sure we are drawing a circle under any of these three conditions like this. That looks kind of interesting. What happens when I swap the sizes? Click the like please if you want more coding tutorials like this one. You can also subscribe if you want to know how far we can take creative coding with JavaScript. I call CTX stroke on line 45, 50 and 54. I will also call close path on lines 46, 52 and 57 because the first circle we are drawing there is just the outline of the bubble. I will draw another circle each time to create white reflection patch. To start drawing new circle, I call begin path on lines 47, 54 and 60. And this is what we get, just the bubble outlines. On lines 48 and 49, I will call CTX arc two more times. This will be the largest bubble with size of 13 pixels. And I want it to have two reflections on it. This time, I will not call close path because the path will be closed on line 64. I copy the two circles and paste them into code block for middle sized bubble. And our else statement, which will run normally when mouse is not near, we'll have just one reflection, like this. On line 65, I change size to this.size divided by 3, which will make the reflection smaller. And I want to position it slightly to the side, relatively to each bubble, so I say this.x-1 and this.y-1, like this. For the middle size bubble, I actually want only one reflection as well, so I delete the second circle from line 58 and the remaining circle will just have the same values like the previous one, so I copy CTX arc from line 64 and I paste it here on line 57. Now I just have to adjust it because this bubble is larger. Let's do this.x-2 and this.y-2. If you look at the if-else statement, you can see this middle bubble will only be visible when particle position is touching mouse radius border or is up to 5 pixels smaller. It will be just a small circular area, but particles move very slowly when they reach that area, so they will stay on this size quite often. The first if statement will run if distance between mouse and particles is less than mouse radius minus 5. Since mouse radius is currently set to 150 on line 11, it will draw the largest bubble with size 13 whenever distance between particle and mouse is anything between 0 and 145 pixels. Here we will fill two white circles. It's a big bubble, so it should have two reflections inside. One will be larger, so this.size divided by 2, and the other will be smaller, this.size divided by 3. The first reflection will be positioned to the left relative to its bubble, so this.x-3 and this.y-3. The second smaller reflection will be positioned to the right, so x plus 1 and y plus 1. Now the reflections are overlapping. Let's position the smaller one better. Plus 3, x plus 4, x plus 6, get in there, <laughs> x plus 7. Let's make both reflections smaller. Larger one will be this dot size divided by 2.5. The smaller one will be this dot size divided by 3.5. This looks alright. 
On line 34, I can change how fast the bubbles move by adjusting this to density value on particle class constructor. You can play with all these values and do some coding experiments if you want. I will spend some time in the laboratory as well. Let's see if I can make this into a completely different effect. I think I have a good idea. The main thing we should keep in mind is that if we want to change what our particles look like, we can draw anything and put that drawing code here inside custom draw method on particle class. We can draw, for example, stars, rectangles, or even images. You can replace particle with small images of cats, for example. That would be an experiment. <laughs> or even better, use a sprite sheet and make the cats animate in reaction to mouse. Time for a coding challenge. Would you be able to take an image or even a sprite sheet and replace bubbles with sprites? I explained how to use sprite sheets with particle system code base in this video. There is so much we can do with that. New creative coding tutorials are coming soon. Check out my playlist if you want to see other cool JavaScript effects. Have a great weekend and keep learning. See you soon.